Welcome to Compilation Arena. Please like and subscribe, it really helps me keep going. You can comment about anything and everything. I'm here to listen. If you have difficulty understanding Japanese words pronunciation, please enable subtitles. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Web Novel Chapter 216, Versus De Gruel Part 5 This might be impossible. That's the honest impression of the demon Lord Rumina's Valentine. Her plan was to kill De Gruel using her strongest technique in the first attack, but it had no effect. With Death's Blessing, the life and death reversing technique, De Gruel should have died. However, the result was that the instant death effect was nullified, and Rumina's secret technique was defeated. At that time, Rumina's was able to partly foresee that thing would proceed this way. The one-on-one -on -one fight between Albert and Grauward continued. Both of them didn't even take a step back, it's seemingly an even fight. However, when the fight between the two was observed with ultimate skill lustful Lord Asmostius, the situation shows a different outlook. Against Grauward who's a mass of energy, Albert was distributing energy into every important point of his body. The decrease of their vitality was insignificant, but the difference in the aggregate amount gave hint of the outcome of the battle. In other words, before Albert finished to cut down Grauward, the outcome will be decided. Albert's defeat, that was the situation would be. However, no one could criticize Albert. Rather, with his wonderful skill, he was fighting evenly against the Sword King. If the difference of the energy was not taken into consideration and only the sword techniques matters, it can be said that Alberto's superior. However, even so, the situation didn't change. The way things are going right now, Albert's defeat was just a matter of time. On the other side, the battle between Adelman and Fenn also growing intense. The young man with black hair who wears the jet black colored priest clothes against the skinny, small giant who wielding Gleipner. Adelman had possessed and combined with the death dragon Wenty, and his energy has increased greatly. However, even so, the difference was obvious as Fen who was in front of Adelman can rival a true dragon. For Ruminus who can see vitality in numerical form, the differences were despair-inducing. Against Fen who's called both the fighting god and fist god, for Adelman to be able to survive this far was a miracle. In the flurry of throwing, punching, and joint locks, it was obvious that physical strike was the main constituent. Joint locks were meaningless, since for a spiritual life form, physical damage would completely recovered in an instant. He just barely able to modify the technique to perform a throwing technique to deal and blow away the opponent. However, in the end, that technique was for defending, Adelman couldn't expect Fen to be damaged by the throw. In other words, he just stalling for time. After Adelman understands his own disadvantage, he was fighting with the objective of exhausting the enemy by a long period of combat and not aiming for victory. However even so, he was concentrating so hard like he was treading on thin ice. In Rumina's sight, she could see Adelman's appearance who ward off Fen's attack by casting away all of his defense and manipulated his energy to concentrate it on a point. In order to cover the difference of the energy density, Adelman was fighting by concentrating all of his power on one point. It was already such ability that could be called as a miracle. However, it won't continue more longer, Ruminus thought that it wouldn't take a long time for Adelman to lose. And then, Cheyenne, the woman who fighting against De Gruel and standing up many times in front of him. Her appearance reminded Ruminus of the hero Chloe, who saved her in the past. Blood flows out from her head without any sign of stopping. Even the wound in her whole body bore new wounds after recovering. Cheyenne's attack couldn't touch De Gruel, she was mortally injured due to De Gruel's counterattack. Even so, Cheyenne stood up, she kept challenging De Gruel over and over. Ah, Nesan. Please stop it already. Cheyenne Sama. You can't win against our pops. It, it's dangerous. As it is right now, Cheyenne Sama will. Even De Gruel's sons were flustered at first. However, would they broke through their hesitation mid battle and. You oh 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 oh. Pops. We will be your opponents. There's no other way. I'm prepared for it. I'll do it. And then, I'll get praised. Exactly as stated in their determination, they went to face De Gruel. And right now, they were barely alive bearing serious injury, lying on the ground while being powerless to stand up. Those three were strong as magents. That's why they were alive. However, that's all. In front of De Gruel's absolute strength, it was all useless. This is impossible, right? There's no reason that we can win. Even I only able to go this far, huh? 
to Ruminus's ear who reached the stage of resignation partly. Princess, the preparation for the retreat was complete. Such whispered voice was heard. The seven celestial sages who command the raid seems to have advanced the preparation for a concealed transfer secretly. They have judged that there's no chance for victory in this war and likely to have made their safety a priority. Certainly. That's right, certainly, if she was the Ruminus from before, she would withdrew without any hesitation. Such thing as going to war with no chance of winning was nonsense. The country can be rebuilt, it wasn't something she need to be concerned with. Ruminus and her kin has eternal life, there's no reason for them to fight betting their life on it. However, will I be really fine? Will it be a correct action for me to withdraw from this place? Ruminus hesitated. Cheyenne was barely being able to stand up because Ruminus support. She used an ability increasing skill, so even a near-death serious injury would recover immediately. Improving Cheyenne's regeneration power to the utmost limit was also one of Ruminus' ability. If Ruminus withdrew now, it meant Cheyenne would die immediately. Abandoning the front and running away alone by myself? Such a thing, such an ungraceful action, I'll never accept it. I'm the proud queen of nightmare, you know. And so, Ruminus steeled herself. I won't. I won't retreat. If by any chance I get killed here, go select the next master from the seven lords. I'm one of the proud octogram. Such thing as running away ungracefully is not fitting for me. Don't you think so? She said so and sprouted a beautiful smile. An alluring smile which didn't suit the face of a young girl. The seven celestial sages who heard it have their eyes wide opened with surprise instantly. Their master who attached so much importance to life, surprised them with such boast. However at the same time, they were deeply aware. That's right, it didn't suit demon lord Ruminus Valentine, who called as the queen of the night to be running away. Because she's the vampire princess who always acted gracefully and reigned nobly. I'll not obey such order. Dot. Yes. Dot. At the time of your ruin, we'll also follow. Dot. The seven celestial sages disobeyed Rumina's order for the first time. Although she was surprised by it, it wasn't unpleasant feelings which perplexed Rumina's. Far from it, it was instead pleasant feelings. Foo, you fools. Then, strengthen the barrier quickly. Hurry up, you blockheads. Rumina's cheerfully ordered them. As your will. Then, the city defense will. I see. Change the barrier's attribute using the holy demonic inversion technique. Don't allow those angels invading the holy city. As long as we buy some time, Demon Lord Rimuru will send reinforcement. Princess, do you believe in Demon Lord Rimuru? Humph. I don't believe in him. However, there are people who believe in their master while fighting. Don't you think that the act is worth believing in? As she said so, the seven celestial sages shifted their focus on the battlefield. How the demon lord Rimuru's subordinates were fighting couldn't be assessed as just stalling for time. In this situation, even they're betting their life to buy time, despite it practically having no meaning at all. It may be reasonable for their own country, but they had devoted their own life in order to defend the territory of an allied country. Their action was a strong proof of them believing that their master would never abandon them. Indeed. Believing such word, we have forgot about it for a long time. Dot. Well then, we will start the strategy. Dot. May fortune with you, princess. Bowing all together, the seven celestial sages left. Will it be really all right? So Ruminus hesitated. But, she didn't regret. In front of her, Cheyenne stood up once more. No matter how she was wounded, she rises up many times. That's right, I, I should do the only thing I can do, and so, at the moment Ruminus tried to support Cheyenne again. Good grief, I have become the opponent because I feel the sign of awakening, but it's disappointing. Or, because there's a person who defends you, you can be at ease? If that's the case, first I'll deal with your recovery means. That way, you might grow a bit. Dot. She heard de Gruel's muttering voice. It took a moment for her to realize the meaning of it. St, stop it. Cheyenne shouted in panic, but she received de Gruel's blow and became silent. She didn't seem to be dead, but it was very unlikely for her to move. Glancing at her, de Gruel turned around and began to walk towards Ruminas. Ruminas prepared herself. Very well, de Gruel. I shall become your next opponent. Ruminas put herself on guard towards de Gruel. The words she said for herself, she felt funny in her mind. Far from being an opponent, 
to degruel someone like Ruminas was equal to garbage, so she thought. FOMO. As expected, Ruminas. The pride of a demon lord is not just for show hadot. To de Gruel's words, she laughed thinly. Such thing as pride, she didn't think about it at all. However, Ruminas just thought that she didn't want to betray Cheyenne. It's strange. Unlike with Chloe, I have an associate with her for a long time. Fighting against de Gruel even though there's no chance for me to win. Why didn't I run away? Did I also believe? That someone would come to help. Such thing, such convenient thing, would not happen. She pondered and understood. Suddenly, the image of that selfish and carefree black dragon crossed in her mind. A smile floats naturally on her mouth. Her appearance make de Gruel felt strange, but he ignored it without saying anything. Well then, here I go. At the same time as him shouting, his fist was thrust out towards Ruminas. Her soul was frozen in fear. However, Ruminas didn't run away. Evasion was impossible. Recognize that, Ruminas mocked herself. It's so different. Struggling till the end. I'm like a different person. But there was no dissatisfaction, instead, she puffed her chest proudly. At least at the end she has her pride as a demon lord, and she can boast as she challenged a strong person without running away. At least, in her final moments, with her hand, that hateful arrogant evil dragon. Rumina's mind then stopped for a moment. It occurred immediately before de Gruel's fist reached Rumina's. The time had stopped because of Velzard. Right now, currently, something happened before de Gruel's fist reached Rumina's. The powerful fist in front of her eyes. And then, a palm of someone with tan skin received it. De Gruel's attack which had an overwhelming power was obstructed by a man who suddenly appeared in front of Rumina's. Then, Quahahaha. I have arrived, one. While laughing loudly, the man shouted in loud voice. However, time was currently stopped, the man's voice didn't reach anyone, with the exception of de Gruel. No, it reached Ruminas actually. Did he come here? However, Ruminas was conscious, but her body can't move. In such confusing situation, Veldora's voice reached Ruminas. What's this, I can't speak. Has time stopped? But who did it? She was flustered because she shouted instinctively, but Ruminas noticed that she couldn't speak. And so, trying to grasp the situation, finally she realized that currently the world's movement had stopped. What a carefree guy. Even when the world stopped, for him to be able to move like it's natural. It was surprising as Ruminas continuously thought. At the same time, it became very ridiculous. The tension that strained her before death had loosened, she felt a sense of relief filled her heart for some reason. Impossible. For me to feel relieved just because Veldora have came that can't be possible. She threw away such feelings which crossed in her mind and focus on the current situation. There was no light, she couldn't understand anything inside the stopped world. However, Rumina's super perception began to perceive the situation faintly. Only Veldora and de Gruel who calmly moving. She listened carefully to the conversation of those two. What? The v even though I have make my entrance coolly with a lot of trouble. For the world to be stopped? Oh, it's Veldora. It was a miraculous timing, but you have my condolences. Even though I said that, I'm not the one who do it, okay? Anu, I know. The one who can do thing like this is probably my Anu. As for the length, enough to stop time for two seconds, that person has the useless habit of stopping time for a long time. Dot. Oh well, there's no meaning to stop time for a long time. If there's someone else who can move inside the stopped world, stopping time doesn't have any meaning. Dot. That's right. I have advised her several times, but she doesn't listen to me. Oh well, it's fine as I don't really care anyway. She messed around such as stopping time when it was punishment time. Oh well, forget it. There's another thing to discuss. Ah, uh, what? Umo. To match the timing when the time moving again, I want to redo my arrival. So, as I decided to be cool, it's necessary to make Ruminas impressed you know. Can I hear the reason? Kwa ha 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 ha. What, it's simple you know. I till now have done various thing. Therefore, Ruminas considerably resents me. If I make her indebted to me while displaying how cool I'm, she would forget everything, that's the plan. Ku 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 ku. For that reason, I was hiding myself from sight. I don't know when you might go berserk so I was a bit worried here. Yet, even though I had made my entry so cool with a lot of trouble, it was ruined because of my ano. 
That's the reason. Can I ask you for that? Ha, Ruminas seemed to hear de Gruel's tired sigh, and then, Ruminas also felt the same. This rotten lizard, I'll strangle him later. Ruminas raged with her face turning red. If she could move now, she'd gifted him a kick without a doubt. Perhaps, I'd be able to move because of anger? Thinking so, she hated Veldora's attitude. Veldora didn't think that Ruminas can hear him in the stopped world, she deemed it to be his carelessness. I'll teach him a lesson without fail later. Rumin is sworn so in her mind. At the time when de Gruel about to answer Veldora's offer, there was a person who tried to stand up with a staggering movement. It was Cheyenne. Her eyes were bloodshot, the open wounds on her whole body haven't recovered. However, it was strange that no blood flowing out. While cladding in a strange atmosphere, Cheyenne completely stood up. HM, so de Gruel gazed at her. Cheyenne, ha. Huh? You were able to move even in the stopped world. HM, Envy seems to have disappeared. This is, I see. Veldora noticed something and stopped talking, then as if to interrupt at his word. V, Veldora Sama. Th, that person, is my prey. What, would you hand over him to me? Cheyenne asked Veldora while panting, using her sword as a cane to stand. Veldora looked at her while squinting his eyes. I see, very well. I will lend you a bit of my power. Fight well to your heart's content. He responded so. Th, thank you very much. Cheyenne seemed ready to fall, so Veldora supported her. And, from where Veldora touched Cheyenne, his energy flowed. Who? Although I had said that I would lend it to you, there is no fragment of restraint from you, eh? Perhaps, I should collect it later from Rimuru. Veldora grumbled, looking worn out while Cheyenne's complexion improved fast. The wounds on her body healed, even her clothes, before anyone aware, had become as good as new. De Gruel raised one of his brow tolerating it, standing silently waiting for Cheyenne's preparation to complete. Then, individual, Cheyenne undergo ability evolution, ultimate skill tyrannous Lord Susanu was acquired. Dot. Unchanged by even the stopped world, the voice of the world was heard. It was the moment when Cheyenne had awoken ultimate power. I have kept you waiting. However, as you hoped for, I shall give you some amusement. Dot. FOMO. Well then, I shall accept your offer. Dot. The two nod to the other gladly and once again confront each other. In the stopped world where it was difficult to perceive the opponent's presence, the fight between Cheyenne and de Gruel begun. Meanwhile, by any chance, is my turn only. Veldora was anxious about such thing. There was no one who noticed it. 